Introducing a favorite Big Brother 24 house guest, Esquire, fitness guru, dope picture taker, thirst trap setter, and all around amazing guy, Joseph Abdin. I see somebody cool coming in. Woo! What up? What up, Tracy? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my God. Let me set this up. Thank you. First, I just got to give you your proper introduction, you guys. You know, I'm Tracy Lauren. Welcome to Say Word. I'm so excited about my guest today, the incomparable Joseph Abden, Big Brother 24 house guest, Esquire, fitness guru, <laughs> first taker, great picture taker. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> oh my god, Trace, and that's it. That's my let me get that for my voicemail for every intro yes, I'm going forward. Yes, I, listen, listen, I'll put it on there. I'll put it on there any day. First, I just want to set a few ground rules, you know, guys. This is good vibes only today. We don't want no shenanigans in the in the comment section. So, you know, I got Jess and Chelsea and Don and Ty J holding it down. And if they see anything crazy, you will be booted out faster than pooch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love it i love it tracy you know we don't have no shenanigans okay Absolutely. so thank you so much for being here joseph though i really appreciate it man thank you thank you thank you no for- thank you so much you have an amazing platform i would love nothing more but to get on here and you know chat with you like amazing person amazing you're doing god's work i saw it the second you guys you reached out i was like I- absolutely i would love to do this i love what you stand for you're an amazing person Oh, thank you so much. So listen, first, I just want to ask you, how's, how are you doing? Are you taking care of yourself? You're eating properly, getting some good rest. Got to make sure you're, you know, got to stay, you got to stay right. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing my best, you know, with my newfound lifestyle and routine. It's a yeah. little bit hectic, but with each day, I'm getting a better control on it. Um, it I, as chaotic and goofy as I am, I am very routine and structured and organized. So um, I've been trying to, you know, get a grasp on that, getting the gym, getting my diet back in line um, post Big Brother. But uh, yeah, it's it's getting better and we're getting there. So, you know, ultimately, I'm happy. You know, I, I got uh, I woke up today, so we're going to get there eventually. But what about you, Tracy? How are you doing? It's usually all like about me. Are you taking care of yourself? Like, You know what? I'm doing well. I, I've been really busy. I take part time. I take care of my grandmother. She's 95 and she loves Big Brother, by the way. She's the one oh that was God. the big um so yeah she she always watched the show I never did until this year which you know is another whole story but um I'm good you know I'm busy as I don't know what it's like super busy but I'm really excited I think life is good and I'm just excited about what what's in store you know what I mean absolutely Um, yep I feel like you know for you since I've seen you know followed you after big brother and I you just look happy and I'm always it brings me joy to see people happy you know, and just kind of like stepping into your moment. I think it's more than a moment for you, though. I think this is going to be this thing has some legs for you. And I'm really happy for you for that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. And first, I just want to send you my love and support, you know, as someone who would take care of their mother, like I know it can't be easy taking care of a loved one. So I know another testament to how amazing of a person you are. Um, And please send your grand, uh, send your grandmother my love and support. And thank you for watching the show. I appreciate that. From her. I- I will tell her you said hello. So let's get into it. So, you know, life is different for you now, right? It's it's been a little bit different. So what was like that defining moment when you knew things were different? Like what's what's the one thing that happened post Big Brother that was like, okay. Um, (laughs) You know, what's funny is I guess it was my family and probably my brother um, looking at me and being like, like, because I tried to stay away from my phone. I tried to like not get overwhelmed. Like, you know, I didn't know if I was coming out to positivity, negativity, or even nothing is, you know, during number three, I was like, you know, I was out of here months ago. (laughs) So um, I I had no idea really what I was walking into, but just by my brother's um, initial interaction for me, that's where I, I felt like there was some shift in the air. Like he was definitely like, you know, Um, uh, the first thing I asked was like, if I made them proud and his response was you made us and America proud. So that to me was like, okay, thank God. Um, that was a huge goal of mine. I didn't really know what I was getting into with big brother, but (laughs) I was fortunate enough to have navigated it pretty okay. I think, 
And um, yeah. I, I think the biggest shift was uh, the first thing I did was kind of just hang out, wait around. I, ca- I tried to stay off my phone as much as I can, talk to my mm-hmm. brother, not even like about the game too much, just mainly about like how they're doing. Um, there were other families from the uh, cast there just talking and chatting up with them. And then um, I went and spoke with Taylor immediately. So um, mm-hmm. I guess the biggest moment for me when it hit was just like all the interviews that came right after and just people like, you know, inquiring about who I am and what I do, just like, you know, that interest, which makes me feel so appreciative because like, you know, it, it's, it's a good feeling to know that, you know, people want to know how and why you are the way you are. And it, it's just reassuring to know that you're doing something right, hopefully. <laughs> Yes, no, you you definitely are. I mean, honestly, like I said, I I wasn't a big brother watcher. I watched it. I just happened to scroll by and I saw Taylor being bullied. And I was like, who is this? I didn't know her name at the time, of course. And I was like, who's this black girl being bullied? And wait, what's going on here? Let me let me let me lock in. And so I locked in and then I saw you and you just your 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 essence, just your goodness shines through like straight up. Thank you so much good dude man and um i just i stuck around because i had to protect taylor um like from <laughs> phone. <laughs> like this is my sister and i'm protecting her um but um yeah, it, just, it just and i was thinking how does a person like that survive on a reality show because reality is kind of cutthroat right like yeah how do you, oh, absolutely. you being your type of person on a reality show um, I, I honestly, I, hilariously enough, I've joked a couple times, and I don't know if the live feeders caught it. That I, I can't. This is not for me. Like I, I literally remember, close to my eviction, I said something around the lungs, like, um, I, like I'm gonna have a hard time winning this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I do see, especially playing a game like Big Brother, where it's easy to lose yourself. There's that justification of in your pursuit for money, you can right. bend your moral compass. And be okay with things you ultimately won't be okay doing. And I just felt like it was unfortunate because there's as much as Big Brother has a lot of overlap with life itself. Like at the end of the day, a lot of people's journey is a pursuit for money. And I I, I just didn't want, because I have this cash pot prize in front of me, to allow right. it to bend my moral compass to something that I can't stand by in any way, shape, or form. Granted, now, uh, was I the exact person? There's times in the house where like, you know, I wish I... I, I addressed a situation better than I would have without any delusion of the money itself. But um, ultimately, you know, you live and you learn. And I, I think it, it is difficult. The reality TV arena does not really. And again, there's always this pursuit for good TV and good TV is, you know, unfortunately associated with drama and problems. And, you know, me being the person I am, someone who, you know, likes to promote love support, um, I want to change the narrative that, you know, and I, I would consider it good TV. Like even with my relationship with Taylor is like, what did I try to provide as much as I can? And I'm sure the live feeders can attest to this more than people who just watch the show it is like when I could anyone in the house like who I felt was falling, although I'm competing against them and I am incentivized to let them fall down that hole or to not associate with them. I just couldn't bring myself to do it, whether it was Brittany in the first week, you know, um, even Michael, when he was on the block um, that first week or Taylor's entire story, I just, I can't leave these people, even if, you know, their game is in jeopardy, it's going to hurt my game. Um, it, it's just, and, and I think there's a life message there associated with it where like, you know, doing the right thing does still come at a price. And um, that's just everyone's decision to, you know, make. Well, and you know what, like, the decision that you made to just be yourself and the person that obviously your parents, your baba and your mama raised you to be. <laughs> Thank you. I know, baba. Um, raised you to <laughs> Shout be. out to baba. <laughs> Shout out to baba. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that person um, is why you're getting what you're getting right now. Like real talk. Like if you're if you're not the person that you were in the house, wh- which is obviously the person that you are in real life. We're not getting this, what we're getting right now. Um, I literally mean it. Your goodness shines through. And Thank you so much. People, people want you to win. I wanted you to win. When when Kyle was stabbing you in the back, I was like, oh, I'm going to I see Kyle on the street. It's, it's, oh, it's my going. God. <laughs> yo, yeah. yo, 
I'm originally from Chicago. Oh. And so I to my and I was like, oh hell no. What? He me like, my cousin? No, 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 no. Like, when I see Terrence in the streets, it's on. Like for real. So I, was so upset. I was like, I was so invested in this season. I was like, this is not this is not normal. I was like, yo, this is what's going on right now. It just made me so upset to see what was happening. But anyway, like I said, it's for a reason. reason. Um, go ahead, go ahead. And I was going to say, and I completely understand because you guys as viewers just watching us live our everyday lives, you guys become friends, family. That's why I try my best to never invalidate the feelings of any fan or viewer or anything because you guys are a part of the story as well. Like you guys, I mean, even the story hasn't even finished. Like, of course, Taylor and I's relationship started in Big Brother and it's progressing here outside of the house. And the love and support you guys have given to both of us, um, it, 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 you guys are a part of it. Your feelings are just as valid as all of ours, which is why I understand, like, when you guys feel hurt, pain, or, you know, any emotion, um, Big Brother is such a unique show in the aspect that, like, you guys are not just watching, you're watching us as people. And, of course, although we are house guests and players, ultimately, there's some form of our personalities that you guys are getting associated and accommodated to so that's why you know it just feels so love and reassuring that like you know when you guys talk to me or get to know me it's like almost every conversation I have like whether it's my first interview or uh multiple interviews it's like I'm talking to people who genuinely know me and I forgot it's because my life was basically under a microscope for a while <laughs> it's, it's true I mean it's true it's you know you know, I mean, obviously, reality TV, you have to have villains, you know, um, of, of you have to go in. most people go in with a plan. I'm going to be this villain. I'm going to be this person like you. You have to have a plan to even get far on a reality show. Um, but when you have someone that just kind of comes in and they're, you know, the, part of the plan or maybe not even the plan. It's just let me just be myself, you know, and it ends up working out, maybe not in a way that you originally wanted was, you know, three quarters of a million dollars. But it's so much bigger than that. You know, you're, you're going to live beyond that show. Absolutely. And of course, for me, like, you know, coming in as the alternate uh, without much strategy or familiarity to the game or the show, I wasn't given much room, but to kind of just be the person I am. And, yeah. um, you know, that's why I was a little unfortunate when I heard that, like, you know, there was rumors or comments going around that, like, my kindness or my compassion or my empathy was gained because, uh, I would offer that in, in a real life situation. And the unfortunate thing is the people I usually tailor included offered compassion or empathy or, you know, a shoulder um, really did not progress my game in that moment, shape or form. A lot of it actually was led with, you know, I, I was met with hostility or not even hostility, just like detriment to my own game as in like, he might be working with them. Now we're more incentivized to either send that person home or Joseph included um, and, and granted, I think that's why when I watch the first episodes, like I'm, I'm targeted uh, as well as with, you know, Pooch and, um, and, and Taylor, I, I guess this is why, you know, we took our time is she, we are, we do walk in that house as strangers. And as you mentioned, people can pick a persona or a player to maintain. So we just all want to confirm that we are who we say we are. I mean, a huge thing at the end of the day, you know, I hid that I was a lawyer. Um, and, and I love doing that. Um, a huge reason was like, you know, I love people getting to know me for me and like my personality and their perceptions being rooted in their interactions with me and not the fact that, you know, there's this undertone of, you know, let's say uh, prestige or intellect because of my profession. So I, I had, that's why it was so easy for me to uh, keep the secret a secret because I loved engaging with people just for their genuine interaction with me and not my background. No, for sure. I mean, and obviously, and, and again, you got to have some, you got to have some secrets, right? There has to yeah. be some, some game and you can't tell everything. You can't put all your cards out there. So we don't fault you for that. I mean, we like it. It's great to know like, oh, this dude, this dude's a lawyer. It's like he was in there being <laughs> goofy and doing all this stuff. And it's like, nah, like he's straight up a lawyer. He passed the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. And, and I also wanted to change that stigma, too, because, you know, hilariously, like, uh, lawyers are always supposed to, you know, be uptight and, uh, of course, maintain professionalism and everything. But, you know, Xavier's another one, too. Like, we're goofy, funny, have a good time. Like, 
Um, and, and I just wanted that perception to be maintained. And again, not, you know, I, looking back at it now, like, oh, God, if everyone knew I was a lawyer from the beginning, then they would really, I think that narrative that, you know, my empathy and kindness was just game would have definitely been, you know, far more believable because of my profession as an attorney. Granted, I'm so fresh into the attorney. I literally passed the bar, <laughs> I think. Like, yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> I literally passed the bar a couple months before entering the house. <laughs> It was like, congratulations, you passed the bar. Now you're going into a house with strangers for 90 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> We're going to pause this really fast. <laughs> pause this. Oh, my God. So, like, this is what I've always wondered about reality shows. The ones that I do watch, right? Um, people form an alliance. And I'm thinking, okay, this is cute. But can you really, how can you really have a true alliance on a reality show, especially like Big Brother, Survivor? How can yeah. you really have a, everyone's trying to get that money. So yeah. how, how is this even possible, really? Is it really, is it a true thing? So that's, I think it can be. So that's the problem is um, selfishness. Um, like you said, at the end of the day, like we all want that money, but it, it, one person wins the game, but it takes a team to get to the end. Like you cannot do it alone. I don't care what anyone says. Like um, to win big brother, if you're going to sit there and tell me like, I, I, I did that. Um, you did like everyone does, but to some extent you need help from others, at least in my opinion, which I, and I have to grant because I'm the type of person where like, you know, I feel like a team is more productive than an individual. So one person's going to win the game and play the best, but ultimately you needed a group of people to get further and progress and that was my mindset initially I kind of stuck to that too long <laughs> but it, it can be done but within the I, right parameters sorry I think I see your sister in here go ahead I'm sorry <laughs> your uh, <sister. laughs> oh shout out Jasmine uh, if you're in here um <laughs> but yeah I I was under this uh, uh, I was under the impression like you know at some point which was why I was so strong to the leftovers I'm like only one of us can win but us seven are going to get here together as a team and then that'll utilize you know each other and our own games and um it, it's hard and, and just like in life but like I think it can be done but you're right playing these games where the incentive is only one person can win that's what makes it good tv is like how long or when are you going to jump ship yeah, because like when, like, again, we don't know what's real. We don't know what's fake, right? But when but when Michael, like, straight up, like, threw Brittany under the, like, under the tractor trailer, I was like, oh! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, there's no, there's no, it's hard to say because, like, if that would have saved him, um, <clears throat> then from a game standpoint, like, he did what he had to do. You know, Kyle against me, it saved him. It got him back in the house. Now, how we all play the game will vary there's no rule book to playing big brother but at the end of the day people can utilize whatever they want to get towards the end because like you said there's only one winner so that incentive yeah. to you know prioritize your game will always be there but i always wanted to you know prioritize my game with others as well but like as you know <laughs> playing maybe i'll sign up for a game where there's two or three winners at the end <laughs> Kind of like um, cycling. Have you ever watched um, like the Tour de France or something like that where you have to like, you need a team to help you win, right? Yes. You, there's only going to be one winner. And so you need someone to, to help you win. It's That's what, when you, you just made me think of that just now. It is, Absolutely. you definitely need, you, you need someone to say, you know what? I know maybe at a point you realize maybe you're not going to win or this person has like, the capacity to win and you have to want that person to win too right you have to Absolutely. say i'm okay with this person winning you know what i mean yeah. like if i don't win i'm okay with this person winning so yeah. I, it seems to me that you have to make that 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 decision right and come yeah. to that kind of me absolutely <laughs> and i started to get to a point where like within the leftovers i was like you know if i don't win um I, these are some solid people where like if if they win i'm perfectly fine with that and then as i get to know them each individually more and more i think you can make you can uh I, I haven't watched it but in the jury i make it very clear i want you know i'm pushing for taylor and monty to win which like in my mind was going to be like my final three with those three and i don't think i say to anyone in that house except for taylor 
like you can win this game like I think you're gonna win this game like I and I say it time and time again to her and and that's because I genuinely believe it and even with me thinking she can win and she has the probability to win and everything I'm still aiding her because I I don't I'm perfectly happy with that outcome and Mm -hmm. um I think my background is like a power lifter. You know, I, I competed in a team format My with my siblings were a team. So it's just hard for me to break away from that. And, um, you know, I don't know. I just try not – like, if I don't win, then I have no problem picking, you know, someone I love and support to uh, do it. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, that might may come from – you're the oldest, right? You're the oldest? Yes. Of, of, okay. So that may just also come from you protecting your, your siblings. You know what I mean? Just yeah. Just kind of like sure. That could come from that. And also, I just think it's a testament to your parents, um, for real. Like, they they really raised a good dude. So, Thank shout out so to Thank you so much. Them. Yeah. Thank you so much. And they're both like that. They they both have always, you know, emphasized selflessness and, you know, just trying to be a good, decent person. So, it's hard for me to shake, even when I'm incentivized with close to a million dollars to do that. <laughs> Because like I said, it's gonna come anyway. You know what I mean? Like that the the money and the money and all the other things that you get from because of this opportunity, it's gonna be even better than the cor- the three quarters of a million dollars. I mean it's gonna come. It's gonna come you're, anyway. you're right. I remember having a venting session during Dire Fest and we were going through strategies and tactics. Um and I was just talking through in the DR about what I can do to get out of here and a lot of it le- was like, you know, a lot lying and manipulation. And I remember saying that I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And they were like, um, and I remember just talking through and they were like, you know, it could, if you're not like, there's a, a there's a way to plan it. And I'm like, I- I'm just not going to, I was like, even if it cost me $750,000, I'd rather win or earn that money in a different way. Um, and that's why, you know, I was just like, <laughs> then, and which is why I have so much love and respect for Taylor. Cause she was able to, you know, grab the money in a way that I think is so amazing. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I was, before I grabbed that money, um, you know, I, there's, there's justification. There's a little leeway to, you know, certain moves or stuff like that, that you normally wouldn't do in the real world. But like, um, and my dad and mom have both, both raised me this way. Like if it's, um, (laughs) I'd rather, I, there's other ways to earn money and I'll, I'll figure it out. (laughs) it again yes there are other ways to earn money that that with more integrity and i just i just believe in that too and i think if the money is dirty it ain't no good like if you can't look at yourself in the mirror right like and what that's is it the for? thing and 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 in no way would i want to invalidate anyone's game or previous winners who, who you know did play like you know such a strategic and manipulative game like of course anyone entering the big brother house that is what you sign up to do and maybe if that was a player I wanted to initially perceive as or go for but um, me personally and the game I started the relationships I built the player and the house guest I was which was very in line with myself um, it wasn't a path I, I wanted to secure the bag with so 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 let me ask this question you were an alternate right for people who don't know out there Joseph was an alternate which I don't yes. even know on what universe he was not the first choice <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> oh, thank you. It was the alternate. So, how much do you think was it, Marvin? At, at you, at, at you, Marvin. At you? Yeah. So, how much is Marvin crying right now? <laughs> I, I don't think at all, though, because he he's doing amazing. You know, what's funny is, um, and I think I mentioned this before. I I reached out to hilariously. The reason he doesn't go on the show is because I think he had a contractual obligation with another show. So he's he's, oh yeah, he's very well. Yeah. So I. Right when I got off the show, you know, Big Brother offered me so much opportunity and love and support that I almost felt like, God, who knows? Maybe the guy who didn't go on the show had a family emergency, had like, you know, uh, uh, an unfortunate circumstance. Maybe, you know, uh, this all this that was given to me, you know, was for him. And, uh, you know, I just even though I didn't take it, maybe this opportunity for him was robbed. So I reached out to see how I could help. All I had was like, I think just his name. So, which I asked for before leaving the house and uh, before like finale night uh, on the exit interviews. And I search him up and I'm like, this guy is amazing. Like, no wonder I was his alternate. Like he has his own protein powder. He's, he's, uh, he's a great guy too. We've been in talks. Like hopefully I can meet him soon, but um, I reached out to him to see if there's any way I could help him. But that man is very well set off. Um, let me help you boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, I'm glad to hear that though, because I want everybody to win. I'm I'm glad to hear that he's. Um, I hadn't really looked looked him up, and I didn't really know what he was into. So it's good to hear that yeah, he's doing well. We're very yeah. similar. He, I think he uh, has. I want to say a mechanical engineering background. He's very big into fitness, just like me. So um uh, amazing guy like from our conversations he's he's great yeah. uh so i joke with him all the time when we're talking or i'll comment on his post i'll be like this is why i was the alternate and i'll like you know like hype <laughs> him up um but yeah great guy and um yeah you know and, and ultimately i think he's going on another show i think the circle or something like that so i'll be rooting for him as well he has a ton of opportunities coming his way and in no way do i feel overshadowed you know being an alternate to such a great guy no, I mean, everything happens like, listen, I've had some things like that happen in my life. Well, I was a reporter for ESPN and I didn't get the job originally. I thought I should have. And Very I was lost. like, this, this is my job. And then I didn't get it and I was devastated. But I was like, you know what? This job is fine. And I just didn't give up. I called my manager. I'm like, that job is mine. I want you to get it for me. And uh, she didn't believe me. And I was like, no, I'm taking this job. And so I ended up with the job. And I'm think, Damn, I think right. that things happen the way they should happen, right? Absolutely. Um, you can't write this 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 um, Big Brother 24 story without your story, without Taylor's story, just the way Absolutely. the whole thing is. You needed each and every person in that show and in that season, regardless of whether we like them or not, you needed all of those people to make this story work out the way that it worked out. And Absolutely. the story is literally still being written. We don't know the end to this story. I mean, absolutely, part is over, but we don't know the end of your story yet. So, I, I this is this is like this is Hollywood stuff. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because, like, you know, taking it all in and seeing how everything progressed. Like this was, like you said, it's a story that's still going, and it's so much more than like you know just the the Big Brother. You know, sixteen win the seven fifty go against each other. Like so much more has happened. It's built lifelong friendships, relationships, and like you know, I can't. They call it post Big Brother twenty four point five. Like you know, the the show it's is so over, long. but the relationships and the story still very much alive. And you know, we love the fans and support them so much for just keeping up with us because ultimately, all Big Brother was was watching us in our element, in our personal lives, in a house, and like you know. Obviously, if you tuned in, there was some form of an interest. And that's why, you know, specifically Taylor and I and I know other house guests are very, you know, content driven and trying to stay up to date with these fans because all they did was just kind of live with us and just watch us in our pursuit, you know, for money. And like now that we're out in the real world, like if they enjoyed that, I want nothing more but to, you know, keep that enjoyment going. So I, I was I was um I was on Twitter a couple of weeks ago and I saw that Julie, Julie Chen Moonbez had tweeted out that, oh my God, it's three weeks since the finale and Big Brother is still trendy. <laughs> and I was like, it is still trendy. So yeah. what, what you, I, I know I have my thoughts. What do you attribute it to? This, this, like this interest in uh, Big uh, Brother. So uh, oh, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not very familiar with, you know, post season Big Brother if this is normal, uh, if, the, if you know, this much traction is what's familiar, Big Brother Twitter, um, you know, engaging with the fans, all I, uh, like, I just, I, I guess I'm just me. Um, I, that's how I can say I'm contributing to it. Like, if I see something funny, I'll try to like it or retweet it. If I can engage with the fans where I can, I try to. Um, and, you know, it's funny because it says it's post Big Brother, but at this point, like, you know, it's so much more than Big Brother. These fans are, at least to me, you know, like family. And they're like, you know, friends, uh, like I hate, I don't even like the word, you know, fans is like one way to describe it. But like, I, these aren't people who are going anywhere. Like, you know, they take the time out of their day. This is beyond big brother, you know, it, it's almost quality time to me. So um, I, I just, you know, engage where I can, like, I will never, ever allow myself to be above that or like, you know, um, too busy. I, I am who I am and I stand where I stand because of these people. So whether the, it wants to be attributed to like Big Brother is still going on or still trending, um, I, it's beyond Big Brother at this point. It's just, you know, me engaging with like basically family at this point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that, you know, it has to do well, obviously, with Taylor's historic win as the first black female of winner of Big Brother. Um, I'll, Jailer, I mean, Jailer, Jailer Nation is intense. <laughs> they, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> they, they are something else. Why, why do you why do you think um, just Jailer as an as an ideal resonates with people so much? 
Um, I, one, I think because, uh, and I'll speak for Taylor first. She's such an amazing person. As you mentioned, she has a story like no other. The game she played was like no other. The r- history she made is like no other, which is why I, it's so hard for me to just say big brother because – um, it, it's so much more than that. Taylor being a representation of, you know, black women and their difficulties and how she handled it, what she did. Um, that's what, this was more than a TV show, like what she did and the message she sent was far more than a woman chasing $750,000, which is why I think there is so much momentum and traction behind what we categorize is big brother, but it is far more than that. And um, in regards to Jailer, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fans just acknowledging my support, kindness. And I think in return, my relationship with Taylor, I think, unfortunately, our dynamic is so unique that it doesn't come across, come across often. And that is where, this you know interest by the fans and the viewers are are coming because i get constantly like oh joseph you set the expectations so high or like men like joseph do exist which is so unfortunate for me to hear because i i just feel like i try to be a decent human being so i feel like that shouldn't be as unique or uncommon as from what i'm seeing and taylor you know facing the adversity that she faced and then coming out on top is a you know, it's admirable and it's motivational to those who faced, you know, the same adversities and to know it is possible. You can overcome it and you can do it. And then all with me personally is like, you know, I I've dealt with my difficulties with the show, obviously. Um, I've, I've heard about some things said about me. Um, you know, my relationship with Taylor faced a lot of difficulties. I've faced my emotional tools with it and just responding to it with a smile, I think is, it speaks volume and it can be, you know, a message for others. So um, I think both of us in our own individual and respective capacities are contributing to what comes together as jailer. And I think the fans just appreciate it and ultimately, you know, can want to see more of this type of interaction. And we're, we're more than happy to give it to them. Well, I'll say this because I, I do feel like, um, I feel protective of you guys. I've never met you in person. But I'll say that um, I hope that you are protecting whatever you guys are today, whatever you will be in the future, be it friends, be it married, whatever you, whatever it is, I want you to protect that relationship, you know, that bond, because it's more, it's a bond. So I want you guys to protect that and n- don't be pushed by the people on the outside to give you things that, that they think you should give them, right? So just Absolutely. take that time to take that time for yourself or whatever. I mean it's it's cute. I love the content and stuff, but I also, you know, I'm also concerned about you as people, um, individually and then also as a couple if if whatever whatever that is. But I also want to say that as a black woman myself and in the way sometimes black women are vilified on television and out in the world, um, it was really refreshing to see a man man of color, take up for someone like that. Um, It was just very heartwarming. And my friends will tell you, I talked about this stuff. They were like, would you shut up talking about Big Brother? (laughs) 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 Stop talking about about this show. But it was very heartwarming to see that, to see a man um, stand up for someone like that, that you basically just met. And it, it also let me know that you would do that for anyone, but specifically because you did it for Taylor, um, you know, this black woman, a darker skin, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, it's a lot of history in this country, um, a lot of color, colorism and just a lot of racism. So it was really beautiful to see. So I just want to say thank you. Um, but also that just to make sure that you're being taken care of as well, that thank you're you being so treated properly. And that's great advice and something Taylor and I really make sure and ensure to do is protect our peace. And like, you know, that's why nothing we do is out of character, out of ordinary. Like we, we genuinely want to stay true to each other and ourselves and the relationship entirely. Cause you know um, one huge thing for why we didn't, you know, just jump into it in the house is because we want longevity between the two of us. And however that comes, like she Taylor always says is like, you know, a slow burn. Like I 
honestly just enjoy her company so much that like you know it's just I love spending time with her and whatever comes and whatever happens like you know so be it but we do take it step by step day by day and she's an amazing person and please you do not have to thank me um for supporting or you know and, and or protecting Taylor like that is something that whether regardless of who the person is should be you know done and uh, like Taylor shared a lot of her story with me a lot of the times in either lockdowns um I loved hearing her perspective so often when we talked I felt such a even though like every short or quick conversation I had with her was so deep and I felt so much relationship and no way would I say I can share the same exact experiences with her but she was like you know I, I've gone through so many difficulties and the more she spoke, the more I felt a relationship to her, which is why I got, you know, supportive and protective over her. There's so many, you know, as a person of this color as well as an Arab man, like I've definitely felt, you know, my difficulties in the community. And when she would share her story, you know, one, t one time I remember us relating one another, like, you know, she's in the pageantry world and I'm in personal training. And I know, you know, the difficulties we can face as a personal trainer, a lot of my clients, like they immediately look at my body and my exterior to, you know, debate my value as a trainer. And with her being in pageantry, you know, obviously those women are so amazing and there's so much more to them than their looks, but, you know, on a face value, that's where people want to judge us. And I remember us bonding over that and our, connections <laughs> our our <laughs> our connections I'm, I'm, I'm lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Now he can't remember a damn thing. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> when I start coming, I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, this, this, is, this is a good question for you guys. So uh, think about this. If you buy, if, if, if Jailer was a, a super a comic book superhero duo, would you be a part of, of DC Universe or Marvel? Oh, my God. Um, I would go with Marvel. I think Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> well, what, what, what do you think? I would, I would think Marvel. I don't know. Let's, let, what about in the chat? Who, who do you think, guys? DC or Marvel? I see a lot of Marvel. Oh, Marvel yeah, is winning. Marvel. Oh, snap. Marvel is winning. Oh, snap. It's like. Okay, yeah, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> DC got yeah, shut I, down. No, no, no they were. They, no, it will be it will be a new no, guys. It's not Storm. It's it's a new duo. It's a new duo. We're making up a new, a new duo. Yeah, guys, call Marvel and like maybe you guys can get us to be superhero. <laughs> Listen, I have a whole idea about a, a, an animated series that I'll talk to you and to, you and Taylor about later. Oh but, my god, uh, I would love uh, the, the fan art I see is oh, like no. it's amazing. Like some of the fan <laughs> arts that they send me is like something is next level. An animation would like. My yeah. jaw would hit the floor. I can barely keep up with these amazing drawings they send me. No, they are. Okay, so I have a fun thing for you. So, right? So, let's say 50 years from now, it's the Big Brother 24, 50th reunion, special episode, you know, whatever, series. And um, so, y'all come back. And so, rapid rapid responses, the guests, who, who of the house guests, right? Who would have to change their diaper the most? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah uh, i'll let the comments <laughs> <laughs> comments who would okay who 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 would have the highest body count <laughs> 50 years from now <laughs> oh, there, somebody says <laughs> on the dentures. Can you imagine? Oh, oh my, my god. god. 
<laughs> these people are funny. Everybody's like Turner, Turner, Terrence. Turner, Turner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So let's talk about your family some. You know, um, yes. you had to leave that. You had to, you know, be away for 90 days, almost 90 days. How did, how, what was the, 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 the number one thing that you missed about being away from your family for so long? Oh, oh my God. I guess. So there's some, I, I would say familiar, uh, like just the familial relationship and ties that we had, like, you know, just, um, and I felt that, you know, with, and that's why I, I gravitated towards, you know, I guess Taylor and Monty, because initially there was just like, I, I love to laugh and it's, I do that a lot with Taylor and, you know, just calling them and because we all have our lives like my brother's going to dental school adam's trying to go abe's trying to go to dental adam's trying to go to law jasmine's in law school so like we all are living our lives and like trying to accomplish it but you know like you said we were all raised a certain way so calling them for advice or just sharing like this is how i feel and they can completely understand that um can be really reassuring especially like you know in playing the game there's times where like oh maybe doing this would make so much sense but because of the way i was raised um, and the way I responded, it wouldn't make sense to maybe someone else, but my, my siblings would get it. So I think the hardest part is like on my low days, just not having them where I normally would just call them. And even if it's not for advice, just for shits and giggles to like brighten up my mood. Um, but I, I particularly remember missing them a lot in Dire Fest. I sent them a lot of messages. Like I never talked to the cameras, but I did a lot in Dire Fest. And that is where I really felt like I missed them a lot um but that was probably the hardest part just not you know and, and their faces their smiles like just they they make me so happy they're they're motivating to me as well like um so uh that was probably the hardest part not being with them but i always have this bracelet as a reminder and my chain as well so those were uh they're always with me to some extent it was really beautiful to see like your siblings you know um when, when you came out of the house and just the way that you guys were interacting on social media it's just really cute and i said you know, again, I hate to keep saying the same thing, but it just shows that you come from a really, you know, great family and close family. So that's really, really good that you have. That. It's a blessing. For sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's something, you know, I want to highlight to people, you know, uh, fortunately for me, and I know this isn't the case for everyone, is like, you don't choose your family and not everyone is afforded the luxury of, you know, having the situation that was faced with me. But whether it, when I say family, that's why it even expands to the love and support of um everyone uh that engages with me fans are family to me like you know it's just i would say good people um and i just want to make sure that when i say family i don't want people like because let me tell you this like blood does not and i've i've seen this you know i've worked in a school setting blood does not meet justifications for mistreatment so when i say yep and when i say family i just mean good people around you who love and support you and wherever you find that however you find that in whatever community that's the family i reference that's the chains i wear um and i just want everyone to you know have that and when i i don't and of course if it's your blood then more power to you but if it's not i just what i emphasize with my family relationship like my relationship with taylor like she's like family now like um is just that i want to I, I hope people take away with me with this is just keep good people around you and keep them close. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, that well said, I think that um, it's important to, you can build a network of people. I'm not from New York. I live in New York now, but I have such a great network of people here that they are my family. You know what I mean? It's like we were born into the same and you and mm -hmm. I are cousins, so absolutely family. no, we really are. Like almost every interview we do, like the more I get to know all of you guys, like you, you are, and like it, family isn't a word I'm saying to treat lightly, but it does not mean there's a blood relationship. So that's when I say like um, and, and the quote on my bracelet has my last name, but it, it next to is all for one and one for all, which is like you know that that we don't have to share blood for that to stand by. Um, and, um, that's what I hope people would like, you know, just keep those, like hug your loved ones. And, um, again, I would say family is just loved ones. And, uh, yeah. I hope people can take that away. Um, and, you know, just emphasize that. And if it's your blood, more power to you. If it's not, you know, just keep those people close and, you know, support yeah. one another. Yeah. I mean, I know I don't have you forever. I, I do have, I want to make sure I get to some really important topics, but I do want to say, since we are cousins now, I do have a bone to pick with you because I saw you like flexing in these nice hot whips, but I didn't see a, a seatbelt. I didn't see a seatbelt. I'm like, I'm afraid. They're like, where's the seatbelt? 
Yeah. Wait, wait, in which in which situation? What? Um, um, a couple of times I saw oh you. Oh my god! And I, I okay. In my, I, I usually do wear a seatbelt. If I wasn't, I completely sorry, guys. Please wear your seatbelt. Do not. If I'm being a bad influence, do not listen to me. <laughs> please wear your seatbelt. Um, I, yes. I, it is very yes. important. Take yes. it from a personal injury attorney. <laughs> buckle up. Um. Taylor, you do not beg me to buckle up. What are you saying? You're literally doing your makeup in the car. Um, <laughs> she's like, I'm doing my makeup, doing my seatbelt on. Um, and uh, but yes, yes, no, please buckle up and it, it, call me out, guys. If I'm not wearing my seatbelt in a post and the car is moving, then call me out. Please feel free to. Because I, I, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so concerned. You know, I just want you to be safe and everything. Like I said in the beginning of the conversation, um, I do know. Um, that mental health is a, is a good platform, a platform that's important to you. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, Absolutely. You know, talk um, uh, about mental health and how important it is to you to talk about your struggles with ADHD. So I, I just want you for, for a minute to explain what that is for people who may not know um, what that yeah. may be. Yeah, so um, obviously I actually suffer from ADHD and anxiety. Um, I, I got anxiety pretty bad, like panic attacks. Um, so that's why I have a very, um, I, I guess I would say focus and routine and structure oriented lifestyle is because I get distracted extremely easily. Like you, you can definitely see the people who watched me, um, the way I talk, the speed at which I talk, the speed at which I walk, the pacing, you can definitely see, um, uh, my brain is always usually moving at a million miles per hour. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not very normal to a lot of people. I, I, it can come off as overwhelming and I completely understand that. So that's why I try to be patient with anyone I meet. I, you know, I could medicate, but I try to take a more, you know, um, holistic approach and natural. I try to avoid the medications cause I saw it, you know, altering some aspects of my personality and diet more power to you. If that's what works for you, unfortunately it doesn't so much for me. So I try to take other measures. Um, with anxiety, that's why I always try to stay happy and stress-free. Um, it helps tremendously. I felt like that was the best medicine for me entirely. And, you know, my mother, um, I've watched her suffer uh, a lot from her mental health. She suffers with depression, bipolar, anxiety, ADHD, learning disabilities. Um, and, you know, it, it can really, really take a toll on someone, which is why with this platform, and, and you know, I felt like a lot of her pain stemmed from not, you know, she didn't initially seek professional help, which is why it's so important to me about this topic, because um, the quicker, the better. And the more, the easier you get to know yourself, uh, the better you're situated to handle it. And you can't fix a problem if you don't know there's a problem. So that's why it's just so important to me for people to, you know, acknowledge this and to take mental health seriously, because there's just been stigmas around it that, you know, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't acknowledge who I am and just, you know, address it accordingly and act accordingly. And that's why I have the perspective I do about life. Like a lot of people ask me um, why I am the way I am or how I stay so positive. And it's because of my priority for mental health. Like I'm prioritizing my mental health. And in doing so, I just maintain positivity. Um, so I just want the fans to do that as well, because like I don't want them to get caught up you know, uh, in, in distracting themselves to avoid stress or the problems in their life, even if they're distracting themselves with things positive or jailer or TV, um, I still want them to, you know, get that help if needed or just check in, you know, with your, your professionals. And uh, my mom, like she always says, I know I talk a lot about Baba, but a lot of my personality and my approach to life is because of my mom. My dad did raise me, you know, as a single father, but uh, the limitations my mom was faced due to her mental and physical health issues was, you know, a driving factor in making me the person I am today. And she's an amazing woman, probably the most kindest and sweetest soul. Like if you guys think I'm a sweetheart, you should meet my mother. And um, she's a huge reason I want to continue advocating because who knows, like maybe there's someone similar to her out there where if they heard this advice earlier, it could have made a world's difference in their life. For sure. I mean, let me tell you this, you and everybody else on here, my grandma, who I, I speak about a lot, she's 95 and she suffers from anxiety. And this year, 2022 was just really difficult for her. And so, um, yeah, and I was just, you know, there with her and, and, you know, she's in Mississippi, so I spent a lot of time there. And it's, you know, I just got, I get to see it up close, what it's like and, and what happens when a person has anxiety and what happens when a person has panic attacks. I mean, she had so many panic attacks on me this year. And now mm -hmm. I know what to do. I'm like an expert now. And I'm like, okay, you know, how to calm her down, how to, you yep. know, 
it, and it's so important to have someone talk about that because there are so many people out there struggling and they may think they're alone. You know, they're the only yeah. person like, what's wrong with me? Why, why do I feel like this? And so to have someone like you utilize your platform in such an important way to let people know, no, there's nothing wrong with you, right? This there's is not, yeah. Superpower. It's your superpower. So I, I, I applaud you for that, for using your, your platform in this way. Um, Thank you when, so when much. were you first diagnosed with, with ADHD? Um, so hilariously, I was actually diagnosed when I was extremely young. Um, uh, teachers had a very, very difficult time with me and all my siblings. Like it was very hard for us to focus. And we, it was always diverted. And again, you know, my father being an immigrant and not too familiar with circumstances working full time, like in no way would I in shape, do I blame him? Um, but, you know, it was always diverted to misbehaviors. Um, it was assumed that, you know, I just, uh, uh, and, and with it, with people, and, you know, I worked in an elementary school as an activity director, and I understood these kids, like, uh, it wasn't misbehaving. It was just that, you know, they had so much energy and excitement, and it wasn't that they didn't want to pay attention. It was almost like they couldn't. So, um, and I remember teachers just, you know, constantly complaining, being like, I, I think your kid, and obviously, you know, this is when I'm extremely younger, I end up going to a private school, which, you know, isn't as fully equipped to handle, uh, you know, uh, kids with ADHD or anxiety. And, um, you know, people are shunted off and in, in mental health and, you know, in, in different cultures, like it's just kind of like, you know, brushed to the side as maybe behavioral issues. And um, we, I, I think my mom took us and they were just like, yeah, like the, they definitely have ADHD when we were a kid, but we kind of disregarded it. Um, and it was portrayed a little bit as like, you know, maybe they just need more discipline. And that obviously, you know, wasn't the case because I went right back to school and I kept misbehaving or for, I wouldn't even call it misbehaving, just not paying attention. And that's why I was never disrespectful. I never cursed. I never did anything. But like, you could not get me to sit in a chair. You could not get me to focus. And my grade suffered for it tremendously. Um, not until, you know, I think I, I move out of the house, I go to college and, you know, I start, you know, utilizing the. Uh, the tools on campus and then I'm you know officially diagnosed I do the tests and everything of that nature and then from there my grade starts to progress and like you know I acknowledge yeah. my um, my situation I wouldn't even call it limitations because it's not a limitation it's just how I am and you know I, I utilize it into a tool and like I said you know I utilize it so strong that I, I make it a strength like so much that it makes me graduate early um, uh, you know take the bar early graduate law school early and uh you know, I, I consider myself, I was able to be pretty successful with it. So it's just a matter of addressing it. So, so you, you, so you have this diagnosis and you get into law school. How, how, what tools did you have to use in your toolbox to help you make it through law school and just even through your educational career period? Oh my God. So many. So uh, <laughs> a lot of yoga meditation as well. Like that's why it's a huge part of my life. I may, uh, I have an amazing mentor who is a former Florida Supreme court justice, Alan Lawson. And he's gave me so many tips, tricks, and tools, um, into handling it. Him and his wife, Julie, uh, are tremendous people. Um, they, they, they are the reason I got into volunteering in Honduras and, they they taught a course where I learned a lot of key characteristics and skills, you know, some of it being, you know, limiting my distractions, whether it's putting a screen time on my phone. Um, uh, that's why exercising is such a huge priority in my life. Um, I made sure to no matter how and I spoke in a previous interview that's going to come out, um, no matter how difficult or whatever excuse a law student is given to, you know, uh, normalize, not exercising, being too busy, not prioritizing myself because I'm studying. Those are stigmas that need to be broken down. There's no reason law students, medical students or any students should justify mistreatment to their body or overexertion just because um, in the pursuit of academia that's that there's no real pursuit there because um it's detrimental overall to your health um and yes i'm not saying don't work hard and don't study hard i'm saying do it effectively and efficiently um and that's a huge mantra that i made sure to maintain there's times where like no yeah did my grades suffer because of it absolutely and I, again i'll hold my accountability and my fault to that there would be final exams where i would post that i'm at the gym the night before because that's how I would calm down. That's how I would prepare myself. And uh, my friends would swipe up with pictures of them in the library studying and, 
you know, just grinding it out. But I felt like I, I met a point where I hit the wall and I, it's counterproductive. So let me go exercise. And um, there's times where like I would be uh, my friends would ask me when we walk in, like in law school, they cold call us and they'd be like, Joseph, did you read the case? <laughs> and they would be like right before, <laughs> right before class starts. And I'm like, I'm reading it now. <laughs> and that's because I, I went for a walk maybe the night before, you know, I utilized a lot of things I did is audiobooks. I would turn all my textbooks into audiobooks. I would read it first, turn what I read into a summary in my voice notes, and then play the voice note and go for runs. Like there were just small things that I would do to, you know, accommodate to my uh, distractions. So I would maybe have to read something twice in order for me to really digest it. So that's why I can, um, I've tried to increase my speed at which I read. Um, I'll do an audio book while I'm actually actively reading it. So there was just small uh, tweaks that I would make. I would read articles on, you know, how to combat ADHD in a uh, uh, in the world of academia. And obviously things I've mentioned, like, you know, speeding up videos so that way I can stay in tune with it. Um, you know, listening to audio books. And a lot of it would be, um, I would be in the sauna or on the treadmill, like studying for the bar at the same time. Like I would bring my bar textbooks or um, my audio books or make it virtual, I would run on the treadmill and um, exercise while listening to the audio or the, or the cases. Um, every time I would drive, I would listen to a legal podcast on, you know, maybe civil procedure or criminal law. So that way I could prepare better for the bar. Um, utilizing all these tools other than just, you know, the traditional sit down at a desk with a pen and paper, which never worked for me. Um, and that's what I would tell people to do is just, you know, be, be progressive with it. Try something different. Maybe the things I mentioned won't work for others, but there's, there, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So, so you meet, let's say you meet a kid today, a 14 year old kid, he's being bullied, you know, because he has ADHD. What do you say to this kid to inspire? I, I, I would say that, you know, people and unfortunately, the world is hostile to differences, which is so unfortunate because that's what makes the world amazing. That's what makes, you know, this country amazing. That's what makes us unique diversity. And unfortunately, sheltered individuals and people don't like change. And I think that is one of the most narrow and limiting aspects of the human race is, you know, a lack of progression and flexibility. So I would say to that kid, you know, you're amazing. And don't let this person's limited beliefs fall on you. Don't let the limitation or the box they live in put you in a box. So keep being you keep being different. And the fact that such a narrow minded, you know, sheltered individual wants to bring you down says that you're, you're, you're a light. And unfortunately, some you know, moths are attracted to light sometimes. So, you know, just keep shining, keep being you and keep paving the way. And, you know, the difference is if we were all the same, the world would be boring. So ah, just, I would tell them, I would tell them to keep being themselves. And um, it's something when I worked in the elementary school, I had like a zero tolerance for like, at the end of the day, we all come from different walks of life and just, you know, understanding that this person's perspective is limited will help you, you know, not bring yourself down because you're brighter than that. Absolutely. Do you have a couple more minutes or do you have to run? I think I have another interview at one o'clock, but I, if you have some more questions, I'll definitely take it. I'll just go in late. <laughs> I, just, I just, I just, I didn't want to let you go before we talked about representation. You know, I know that um, you're an Arabic man and I just want to talk about how important that is. Um, your platform is and you being on big brother, how, how important that is to the community. Absolutely. So, and thank you. I, I have no problem that I would definitely be late for this. Um, uh, it's so important to me because, and I've talked about this previously, you know, um, one huge even reason I almost didn't go on the show is like, and I think uh, I, I'm sure people can relate with their experiences. If you, uh, my heart drops every time I see Arab, Muslim, or Middle Eastern um, on media. If I see those words on an article or a headline, uh, my heart literally sinks every single time, even till today. If I, if I see, uh, like even now, if I saw Middle Eastern man Joseph, I would not expect, um, you know, comes out of Big Brother with a bunch of love and support. I, or Middle Eastern man or Arab man Joseph goes on Big Brother. Um, I, I would, you know, associate it with a negative you know, results. 
And I want to change that. That's why it's so important to me. That's why, you know, Taylor's, uh, Taylor's story is so important to me. The difficulties she, she overcame and overcoming it um, as a person of color is just like, you know, it, it's one, it's a step in the right direction. And I don't want to even just limit that to, you know, representation of, uh, Middle Eastern or Arab men. It could be men as a community. It could be people in general. Like the fact that, um, I, you know, people say I stood up for Taylor or protected Taylor. That that shouldn't be stood for, That shouldn't be a representation limited to Arab, Middle Eastern, or people of color. That should just be um, a person, a, a human being. You know, trying to empathize with another. And at that point, we can all relate because we're all people. And uh, for me, it's just important to you know normalize that aspect that especially coming from a background where like, you know, I was growing up definitely called a terrorist bullied um, so much and so concerning that, you know, uh, my middle name was supposed to be changed. I was pulled out of the public school system and that um, is getting better, but it's not gone. And that these stripes and struggles are not limited to just Arabs or middle Eastern people. So when I, when I say um, I want to be a representation, obviously um, my fruits is of an Arab descent, but it goes to all people of color, races, creeds, wherever your background is. Um, I just want, you know, you know, unify unity and to normalize it. You know, even if you're you, you don't have to be Arab or Middle Eastern to relate to me. Um, but in particularly, one of my goals is as, you know, coming from an Arab background to just, you know, uh, diversify and normalize who we are as people and, you know, change the representation and the stigma that is associated when you see the word Arab and an article. Um, and that's, that's a lot of my goal as well. Listen, I, I always say like flying while Arabic is like driving while black. It's the uh, same struggle. <laughs> and, and you're right. And the fact that we can relate to that is what we need to change. <laughs> and that's, again, I think why Taylor and I get along so well is more often than not when we're talking, um, there's just so much relatability. And that's why we don't want a trauma bond because the unfortunate thing is a lot of her story that she mentions, I feel like I can relate to and I don't. It's unfortunate that we can both relate to certain aspects and that's what we both want to change. And just like you said, like the fact that that everyone here, not one person is not going to get that reference that, you know, driving while black is flying while Arab. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that, you know, right away we can bond and laugh and relate over that aspect. But that's what I want. That, that That's what we are. You as well hosting this platform and this podcast. That's what we're trying to normalize. And oh, that's what we want to change. Yeah. We and we're gonna change it. I mean, you, it's a it's a big step. You being on that show and you just representing the way that you represent it for Arab men and um just for men of color and just for men. Period. Like let's just say for men, um um just good human beings, just for humanity. You represent it, and so that's gonna go a long way. It's gonna take a long time to change. We're not trying to change everybody's heart and mind because not everybody can be changed, but you're putting a good representation out there and you're making see um, making people see something different. And so hopefully we won't keep getting the same tropes and stereotypes and movies and TV that we've been getting in Hollywood for the past 50 years or so, you know, it's Absolutely. just kind of um, So last question, and I want to invite you back one day because I have so many other things to talk to you about. I would love like, nothing more. So many other things. Um, so when you get up in the morning, what is Joseph's dream for the day? Um, so, you know, every day I get up, the first thing I think, and it's like a mantra I live by is to make, uh, the world. And I heard it first from Will Smith is to make the world a better place than the day it was before, before I, I, I entered it. So that's just kind of how I go, whether if it's just putting a, another smile on someone I already know's face, um, you know, laughing once more, enjoying it. It's just go guys, please tackle every day. Like it is a gift and that you want to have a good day. And I promise you, you will. That's my main objective. Not like I'm going to get this money. I'm going to do no every uh, like your the clock is ticking. So make the best of it in every moment. Yes. Get this money. Yes. Chase the bag. Yes. Meet your goals. Absolutely. But do it in pursuit of happiness, not in, in the main mission like what is it? and for those who are just you know very money oriented and driving what is the point what is the money there to unlock and very likely it's happiness so just don't lose sight of that you can do it hand in hand that's how i start every morning well you guys heard it from joseph Abden, 
Big Brother 24 house guest, Esquire, fitness guru, thirst trap setter, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Tracy, I'm not joking. Record that and send it to me. It'll be my, it'll be my intro for everything. <laughs> Well, Joseph, thank you. Please, please, please come back. We got more things to talk about. This was such an amazing, amazing interview. You made my day. And um, you just keep shining. Like I said, there's a lot of great things in store for you. I know it. I feel it. And I can't wait to see it happen for thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You as well. Please keep doing what you're doing. Like, please, this is not about me, guys. Please follow her support. The fact that you held this platform and gave me the opportunity to vocalize this is just as important. Please send your love and support to your grandma. I'm sending my love and support to you. Thank you so much. Bye, Joseph. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for everyone that tuned in. Let me jump into this next <laughs> interview. Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>